Let's talk about mobile development on the new MacBook Air with the M1 silicon chip. Hello, I'm the new M1 Mac. I'm a Mac with the Intel chip. Intel is for intelligent. I can run anything and anywhere. You okay, buddy? You seem a little hot. Yes, I'm fine. This is how I do my work, okay, Mr. Cool? Sure, I'll just give you some room. <sighs> I think I can, 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 I think I can. Hey, welcome back, my name is Alex. If you're new here, consider subscribing to the channel. And if you enjoy this video, please give me a like. Thank you very much. Let's talk about mobile development on the new M1 processor on the new MacBook Air. I also have the Mac Mini coming in, which I'm also gonna test in a similar fashion. Now you've already seen a few videos from me here, testing out different technologies, mobile, web, and how these technologies work on the new M1 processor. I have a very light machine here, which is the MacBook Air and I'm comparing it to my MacBook Pro, which is a more powerful machine. But today, I just wanna see how the process of it getting set up with the Xcode environment, with the development environment for iOS, how smooth is the environment set up with the new processor? I'm gonna head over to the App Store and I'm gonna do a quick search for Xcode. Now, if you know about Xcode installations, you know that it takes a while. So I won't bore you with the details in this video. I will be setting this up and then cutting out the long piece in the middle. All right, so let's go ahead and install that. We are rolling. Looks like Xcode is installing. I'll see you all in a little bit when this is done. Maybe in not such a little bit. I'll tell you how long it takes after this is done. Okay, so that was about 40 minutes, finally done. You know that last little bit always takes the longest amount of time. Don't know why they can't time that little spinner correctly. I'm gonna click on open. Open Xcode, it's launching for the first time. Xcode and iOS license agreement, agree. Now it's gonna install some components. So that didn't take too long, Xcode is up. Now I will be trying to build a very simple app and see how long it takes to start up the simulator and compare it to my MacBook Pro as well. But for now, let's check this out. I'm gonna create a brand new application, product name, M1 iOS test. All that is good. Let's click next and let's put it in documents. It feels really swift. <laughs> no pun intended. No, it is pretty fast. The way it created the project was super fast. Looks like it's targeting the iPod Touch. Let's see what else is available. All these simulators are available. Let's target iPhone 12 Pro Max and click on build. So I'm gonna build this first and then we'll do some tests with the other machine as well to compare how quickly they work. The simulator pops up, there it is. It's gonna boot up, take its time. I might fall asleep again. Okay, so as soon as the device booted up, that was pretty fast. And there's Hello World right there. Now I'm gonna compare the MacBook Pro from 2019 with the i9 chip, that's Intel, 64 gigs of RAM, to the MacBook Air with the M1 chip, 16 gigs of RAM. And I'm gonna compare the performance of just starting up Xcode and running the simulator to see how long those things take. So I do have Xcode on both of these. Let me go ahead and quit that again, just to make sure we are starting them up from scratch. And I'm gonna click on these icons at the same time. Okay, this one wins, the MacBook Pro, but it's pretty close, it doesn't really matter. Come on, who are we kidding? You're not gonna buy a new M1 chip just because this one started up a second uh, slower or later. All right, let's go ahead and create a new Xcode project. And here, okay, make sure to select the iOS on this side. App, that's fine. Okay, M1, let's call it Sim Speed Test. And let's call this one Sim Speed Test. Swift UI, Swift UI, make sure we're using the same exact libraries and click next. I'll save this, this one to the desktop. 
fine. And I'm not going to create the Git repository for either one of these. Let's click create. Ah, got to give it to the air this time. That was really fast on the air. And this one took a little bit of time to kick things off. It's still indexing and processing files. Not even sure what it's doing actually, but it's not quite ready yet where the MacBook Air says it's ready to go. Now somebody did ask on the channel whether this is still Intel software running through Rosetta on the new M1 chip. It's an Apple software, it's Xcode. Is it running on Rosetta? I actually don't know that. If you know the answer to that, let me know down in the comments. Both of these are ready now. I'm gonna select my simulator to be iPhone 11 Pro Max, that is fine. And I'm gonna do this one as well to the same sim, iPhone 11 Pro Max. So we have Hello World Project, not exactly a large application, I know, but maybe we'll see a difference. I'm gonna kick things off just by pressing this button at the same exact time on both of these. Boom. Okay, let's see what's happening here. Oh, did it pop up already the sim over here? Okay, there we go. The sim is starting up. The app is already running over there. I didn't even notice, but the build successful message popped up instantly on the M1, whereas here it took a while. You can see the M1 has already started. That was insanely fast. I didn't even notice it. Barely had time to blink. Now I'm gonna run this again, just so you know. The hello world message took a while to show up here as well. Let me go ahead and close this up. Actually, let me go back, iPhone 11 Pro Max. I'm gonna move it to the side here so we do see it pop up and I'm gonna give it a little bit more space. That way we see both of these pop up at the same time. All right, so I'm gonna close this out, close this one out. We now have the position, hopefully it'll remember the position of the simulator on the screen. And I'm gonna press the play button one more time simultaneously, boom. Okay. So the project was already built. It didn't need to rebuild it. All it needed to do was kick up the simulator, deploy the version to it and start up the application. And you can see a huge difference in the M1 performance versus the Intel performance. That's the kind of difference that's really going to add up after a while, after you do this several hundred times a day. <laughs> and uh, it's really noticeable. If there is any other tests you want me to do as far as iOS environment and building and testing on iOS simulators, let me know down in the comments below. I can also try out the hardware device, an actual iPhone deployment, for example. Hit me up in the comments. And if you like this kind of video, if you wanna see more content about the M1, do subscribe to the channel. And if you find this informative, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.